Oh, uh, Green Rider. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Green Rider is pretty good. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the main thing I can say about it. Like, it's not a very original story. Like, in a lot of ways, it's a pretty standard fantasy, but it's done well. You know, I had fun reading it. I didn't hate any parts of it. I enjoyed all the characters and everything. It's just an enjoyable book. The plot follows a girl named Kerrigan, and so Kerrigan was, well, she wasn't exactly thrown out of her college, but she ran away from her college for various reasons, and uh, while she's on the road, she comes across this Green Rider, who is a member of the King's Messenger Service, that's what the Green Riders are, and he has two arrows in him, and he's dying, and he says, I need to get this message to the capital, please, and then she decides, eh, you know what, this must be important, so she takes the message, and takes it to the capital, and the problem is that people are after her now because she has it, and they don't want the information getting out, and also there's an ancient evil that's awakening because, you know, it's a pretty standard fantasy. So, yeah, you can already tell most everything that's going to happen in this book from the beginning. Like, the first half is mostly just Kerrigan uh, on the road trying to deliver the message with a couple of uh, brief asides to other characters doing other things. And then the second half is what happens after she delivers it, and the bad guys are trying to take over and all that stuff. So, there's really nothing here plot-wise that's unique or different. It's a traditional fantasy story, at least so far, because it is first book in a series, and there, it might change in the future. I don't know, I can't say, because I haven't read those yet, but, you know, it's standard fantasy story. And uh, just for clarification, I did read this book once before, but it was when I was probably 13 or 14, so I had forgotten a lot of it, but even sort of knowing what was going to happen, well, I, I don't think that really affected my enjoyment in any way. And that standard nature kind of applies to the characters as well. Uh, Kerrigan is not bad, but there's really not all that much to her. Like, she's just kind of a teenage girl who wants to help, she's fairly patriotic, and she wants to do something good with her life, and she's a, you know, a decent person, she wants to help others, but that's, that's about it. And I guess that this could have gone the route of, like, the world would have, it would be set up to be misogynistic, so women wouldn't really have that much of a role, and she would have to deal with some of that shit, and they'd be like, oh, women can't be a green rider, or something like that. But it, it just kind of ignores that, like, you know, women are in positions of power and stuff all over the place, so it's just kind of more that, oh, she's a young girl and she's trying to do this, which is, you know, that's fine. And she is, when she gets into trouble, she kind of gets saved by other people, but she also kind of saves herself. And I know that sounds a little weird, but basically, every time she runs into trouble, she can kind of get her way, get her own way most of the way out of it, but then something else has to happen, or someone else has to help her, or she has to get lucky, or something like that. And that did get a little annoying, but at the very beginning and the very end, there are two sequences where she is totally on her own, and she totally gets stuff done on her own, so not a, not a big deal. She's not a useless character or anything, and She's, you know what, she's, she's fine, you know? I, I've been going on a little longer than I initially wanted to, but she's a fine character. And maybe she'll get better as the series progresses, but I enjoyed spending the majority of this book with her. The villains are a little bit better, I think, because for the most part, they're just, uh, you know, they're just evil. You know, they, they want power, they want money, they want land, they want glory, whatever. Like... And the good guys are just there to stop them because in their pursuit of power and glory, they're getting people killed. That's fine, you know? And then there's the ancient evil, which is just ancient evil wants to take over. You know, it's, again, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But this book seems to have no illusions about them being deep or complex characters. It doesn't really treat them that way. It's just like, yeah, these guys are evil, and it just has a little bit of fun with it. And they aren't over-the-top evil for the most part. There's one or two bits where they are, but, you know, for the most part, it is just kind of, yeah, they're power-hungry assholes. And it also makes sense why they would be that way. 
Like, uh, one of the main villains is this guy named uh, Lord Mirwell. And the thing is, this world is not really a standard uh, medieval fantasy world. In fact, so far it's the most original part of the book. Because it's basically, it used to be a standard medieval fantasy world, but it's kind of progressing into a more modern age. Like, it's mentioned that the printing press has been invented, and so literacy is on the rise and education is on the rise. And it's also mentioned that politically, feudalism has kind of given way to an absolute monarchy, and so the local lords just don't have much power anymore. And also, economically, feudalism has given way to sort of proto-capitalism, or I can, I can just say capitalism, I guess. And so the merchant class is starting to get more power than the old aristocratic class. So you can see why Lord Mirwell and other people like him would be frustrated with their loss of prestige, because it's only really been one or two generations since this has happened. And you can see why they'd be frustrated, and you can... Like, again, they're not good people, and they're not complex, and their motivations aren't complex or anything, but you can at least see where they're coming from a little bit, and you can see why they would be acting this way. And that... I kind of liked that. The main part of the world that is not very original, and... Like, I know this is a traditional fantasy story, but it did still irk me a little bit, just because I'm tired of seeing this. It's that magic used to be super powerful and super strong and super well understood by people, but over the centuries and millennia, it's just the knowledge has been lost, and so modern people don't know how to do much with magic, and it's just this mysterious thing to them. And, like, that's not a bad thing, it's just I've seen it done so many times in so many different fantasy series. Like, wouldn't it be neat if magic was like technology and it actually progressed so modern people had a better understanding of magic than old pe than the, uh, not old people, uh, than their ancestors? Wouldn't that be kind of neat? Like, I I've seen that done before as well, don't get me wrong, but still, like, just, come on, that, that is one cliche that just bothered me. But, speaking of magic, I did think that was handled pretty well in this. Like, uh, Kerrigan gets a brooch from the dead green rider, and apparently the brooches are magic, and they choose their rider, and hers allows her to turn kind of invisible, but not quite. It's more like translucent, so, you know, if she's in a foggy area or in the dark or something, then she's basically invisible, but if she's just out in the daylight, then you can see her just fine. And it also sucks away a lot of energy while she uses it. So I, I did like that power. And, and I'm not really spoiling anything. She finds it out pretty early on. But, you know, I liked that power. You know, it's limited, but still pretty useful. And I can see why she would be able to use it well. There are some other Green Rider powers which feel a little, uh... Well, they feel a little plot devicey. But it's nothing that's too egregious. At the end of the day, this book doesn't have any major issues. At least none for me. None that bothered me that much. But there are a couple of minor ones which dragged it down. Like, for example, I mentioned uh, the bit about magic was kind of annoying. I mentioned that Kerrigan's character isn't all that great, but that's not really bad so much as it is missed potential. Uh, the only thing that bothered me that was a major issue, or not, not even major, but... The only thing that really dragged down my enjoyment was the action scenes in this are honestly pretty bad. Like, they get described in two, maybe three sentences most of the time, and then it's just kind of over, and it, it, when something like that happens, it's harder for me to envision what's going on in my head, and sometimes I'll just be like, oh, it's over already? Um, okay, that was quick. And so, because of that, the uh, last, like, third or quarter of the book wound up being kind of difficult for me to get through, just because that's when a lot of the action scenes take place, and, well, they, they just aren't that good. So it became, at the, in the end, the climax was more of a fizzle out of the story than it was ending with a bang. But uh, that said, the climax and the ending, it does end in such a way where it leaves itself open for a sequel, but I don't think you would need to read the sequels in order to know what's going on, because I've never read the sequels. Like I said, I read the, this first book, like, ten years ago, and I've been a little curious about what happens next, but I haven't had this burning need to do it, because it wraps up the story, more or less. The prose gets clunky at times as well, like, outside of the action scenes, and it just gets a little 
exposition heavy, like the narrator will explain things and it feels a little bit like they're just turning to the camera and explaining stuff to us, but it's not too, too awful. Like it doesn't go into an egregious amount of detail about the history of the world or anything. And it's not like the characters talk like that to one another. So it's really not, it, it, it's not too big a deal. So that's it for the non-spoiler section. I'm gonna have a quick spoiler section after this, so if you don't want to hear about that, then Green Rider, it's a good book. I think if you're looking for some sort of traditional fantasy, or if you're looking to just get into fantasy, like I think I mentioned this in my last video, like if you're looking to just get into fantasy and dip your toe in the pool, this is a good place to start. It doesn't really do anything groundbreaking or anything all that original, but it does traditional stuff very well, and for that I think it deserves credit. So the only thing I want to talk about in the spoiler section is Jendara. Now Jendara is one of the bad guys' lackeys. She is the she is basically a lieutenant for the old king that was deposed and wants to come back and take over again. He's, you know, evil. And she is not really evil. She is just following him because she's in love with him. And apparently she fell in love with him when he was younger and when he was the heir to the throne and when he was going to be king and apparently he was a bit nicer back then but he was also still uh, you know a rapist and a crazy person and just just evil you know he, he's just an evil dude but she still fell in love with him and even now that they're older and she should know better and he's actually like hitting her and everything she is still in love with him and it just feels weird. Like, I, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't be in an abusive relationship and still feel like you love somebody, but it just it just feels weird. It doesn't really feel like she actually loves him. It feels like, oh, okay, I'm gonna let this guy hit me a bunch and smack me around and just generally be a dick to me, and I'm gonna be okay with it, and I'm also gonna help him out. It just... It, I don't know, it, it could have been an interesting character study, but it just feels half done. Or not even half done, it feels like it's a quarter done. But that's everything. Uh, like I said, Green Rider, pretty good book. If you're looking to just read some traditional fantasy or get into the fantasy genre, then check it out. And I just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Thanks to all of my patrons, whose names are here, but thanks especially to my $10 and up patrons, who are Apo Savalainen, Brother Santodes, Christopher Hawkins, Christopher Quinten, Joseph Pendergraft and Tobacco Crow, and no, 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 that's all of them. I didn't miss anything. Okay, and if you want to get your name put on here or get early access to my videos or any of a million other awesome things that you can get, then consider giving me money. And if you can't do that for whatever reason, then just like the video and subscribe and all that. And 